Hey folks, so today we're having a look at um, Cliff Retreat and this is part of the Coast Unit which is in Paper 1 uh, for Physical Geography and um, Section C. So if you just pop the title at the top, Cliff Retreat um, and this is part of Coasts. Okay, just underline that. Right, we're going to draw a big cliff, I think it's the easiest thing to do here. So if we draw kind of a cliff and sliding down into the sea. And then what we'll do is we'll just annotate this cliff with all the different processes and, and, and impacts and things that you need to know about. Um, so cliff retreat is essentially um, a cliff moving uh, and retreating backwards because of the power of the sea. Okay, so if we just put some waves in place at the foot of the cliff. And remember down here we've got processes like hydraulic action and abrasion that you need to know about. Now, um, hydraulic action is the force of the water and abrasion is the um, it's, it's kind of where the waves have stones and shingle and things inside them. So at the top of the cliff, we've got uh, kind of cracks that, that work their way down into the ground. Now, these cracks might open up in the summer or they might open up after a period of dry weather. Um, often we see cliff retreat happening, particularly when there's been like dry weather and then the rain falls in because the cracks open up and then water infiltrates them. So let's just get a couple of labels on there. So cracks appear after dry weather. Another thing that can cause them, um, or the other thing that can cause them is um, weathering. So that might be biological weathering like plants or, or um, animals or you know burrowing that kind of thing can cause it as well and then water so if we have another arrow precipitation rainfall mainly um infiltrates the porous rock or infiltrates the cracks and basically it saturates it saturates the cliff meaning like it makes it kind of heavy um, and we don't really want a heavy cliff because that's going to cause kind of mass movement so if I show you here um, there we go so we've got mass movement which is a type of uh, falling from the cliff so we have like slumping and rock falls and mud flows and things but yeah mad, mass movement is a slump or a slide of material down the cliff face. And this keeps happening and eventually the cliff will keep retreating. Now again, let's look at why this is happening. So perhaps the, the top surface, if you just draw a line here, if this area up here is um, kind of permeable, uh, it's gonna allow the water in. If we have like an impermeable surface underneath, for instance clay, that's going to prevent the water going all the way down and through and it's going to make this section kind of heavy. So permeable or porous rock is going to allow the water to come in. Okay. The other thing is buildings. So quite often we find houses being built, you know, with a nice sea view and um, that causes additional weight on the land and on the cliff itself. Uh, and that's that's a real problem. So we've got sort of, um, we'll call it urban developments add kind of unnecessary weight to the cliff. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that can sometimes happen, I'll just draw a little person, um, is footpath erosion. Okay, I'm going to draw. Now we, we always see signs, don't we? Stay to the footpath and don't damage other parts of the cliff. 
But the difficulty is the footpath itself can become so eroded, and this has happened in, in lots of places around the UK. Um, this actually caused the cliff to fall into the sea. So don't, don't rule that one out. Um, so yeah, so we've got our sort of easily eroded, softer, porous rocks, and then our less easily eroded ones, which can cause that kind of rotational slip or, or slumping. Now this has quite big sort of social and economic impacts. There have been case studies here in the UK where hotels and businesses and homes and caravans have all fallen into the sea. Um, so it can be a really big problem. Even if your house hasn't fallen into the sea, the value of your house drops significantly if you're in an area of um, potential cliff retreat. Not only that, but people living there uh, often move away because you know if you have if the house the land value is down or houses are vulnerable, it's going to cause people to go, and also it's going to affect the value of businesses in the area. For example, you know even something like you know a golf course, which you would think you know wouldn't matter too much being you know near the, near the sea course it's gonna if it damages the golf course it damages the business very often what is but very often we find caravan parks um are situated quite close to the sea maybe for the the scenic view um but they are quite low value in terms of land value so they can effectively uh, they can be damaged and the environment agency is not going to pay a lot of money to protect them. I mean, they could put lots of things in place, lots of hard engineering, but they tend not to for low value items like that or low value uh, land use. The other thing is roads. Um, roads and pathways um, end up being closed because they're dangerous or, or could potentially be dangerous or, or they get relocated at great cost, which causes um, access uh, to be difficult. Okay, so there we go, you, a really quick fly through uh, with cliff retreat. <laughs>